So I'm replacing the uh, two filters and the gasket and uh, just doing a transmission drop on the 2010 Ram 1500. Um, this is a five speed transmission. So I like to go and uh, I start on either side about back here and I just remove all the bolts on either side and then have a pretty wide bucket like this. And then I leave one bolt up at the front and then as soon as you start to unscrew it, the pan kind of falls this way and it'll start to leak out the back. And I let this drain for about 15 minutes, get most of the fluid that's kind of right there out. And then I'll go ahead and take out the rest of that bolt and then carefully go around, take out the, the other bolts and drop the pan and um, go from there. I took this truck to a, a transmission shop the first time I did a, a pan drop. So they just drop a pan, the same thing I'm doing, replace both filters and then fill it up with new fluid. And about a month after that, I started having a shuddering going on. Turns out I dropped the pan later and replaced them with the Mopar ATF fluid and the shuddering stopped. So lesson learned is when you're doing this, definitely put in the Mopar ATF for. I wouldn't even risk it with anything else. Even if it says it's compatible, I wouldn't put anything else, at least in this five speed. Um, I got this kit at O'Reilly's for like 20, 24 bucks is hella cheap. Came with this gasket, um, secondary filter, and then I don't know which is the secondary, just the two filters. Um, and so yeah, we'll replace those when it comes with these instructions, which I will get more into once I get the pan out. A few more tips and tricks. Um, the pan is actually leaning towards the rear of the truck. That's why you want to drop the uh, these bolts in the back first. And the transmission fluid will naturally leak out the rear. And I had a pan sitting right under there. Um, then I left in two bolts, one on either side, and then I got a jack. And I jacked it up from about right here, just extremely lightly. You don't want to put any pressure, just enough pressure to push the pan against the transmission. That's it. You don't want to, you don't want to bend the pan itself. And after that... I, um, I was able to push up on the pan itself with my hand and then pull the jack out from underneath it and then I just kind of just very slowly let the pan um, come off and then drain the rest into the bucket and then you know wiped it off and pulled it away and then put the bucket underneath the transmission so any drips um, would go into the pan. Um, yeah we see magnet right here it's a good amount of a lot of a uh, I mean, the truck has 200,000 miles, so there's a lot of buildup from there, pretty normal. But the the fluid itself looks pretty red. It doesn't look really brown or murky or dark, so that's really good. Um, this is the old gasket. This is uh, not OEM. and um, But yeah, you want to take off whatever gasket maker or gasket that was on there. This is really nice because it just kind of comes off. But before you put on your new gasket, you want to clean both of these surfaces pretty good, uh, just with some... Uh, lint free towels and some brake cleaner or whatever and get them pretty clean before you put on the new gasket um, and then I'll see how to take off the two oil filters. Now stock rams have the uh, exhaust pipe that comes right underneath the transmission. I actually have long two headers and it's routed behind the transmission and up through there. So it makes it a lot easier to do this. Um, then again you can actually remove that rear bolt and just let it sit on the exhaust pipe but then again you get uh, transmission fluid all over your pipe and that burns off which is kind of annoying but you can't really work your way around that unless you have something set up like mine um, but yeah we can see the two pans I mean the two filters right here and I think this one has one or two bolts I think it has two bolts on either side and then this one is sort of like a pretty standard oil filter looks pretty similar to one at least um, and I think this one just unscrews off and then this one comes off and then there's a tube that goes up into here that you have to, uh, there's a little gasket you have to make sure to pull off. Um, it kind of says to how to do that in the instructions that came with the filter kit so I'll just follow that. Alright, got the main filter out and it's just uh, this little hex, just one of them at the back, screws up in there and then a tube pops out from there and some fluid comes out. Um, but now we need to take out that seal really up in there. So I ended up having to use a needle nose to really carefully just grab it from that edge and then pry it out. I said in the instructions that came with the filter kit to use a socket 
and so I got one that uh, about fit the size of that uh, little gasket and I really carefully just kind of got it even and gently tapped it on there with a hammer and uh, got it pretty flush with that surface so now I'm gonna take the new filter and pop that little uh, this is the old one I'm sorry this is the new one actually that is gonna go into that hole and then uh, that back screw is gonna go up um, and screw into there well I got the other filter out and uh, that one just unscrews out and then uh, screwed the other one back in made sure the uh, adapter piece that goes on it um, is snug and everything before you do that and uh, just tighten it about hand tight and um, then I went ahead and really cleaned up this pan a lot wiped it down really good made sure the gasket surface is really clean on both sides so I went around the transmission made sure the gasket surface is really clean then to kind of uh, get this gasket ready I'm just gonna put in some of these bolts around here and the rubber you can see on this one how it sticks up into it that way the rubber um, will kind of uh, be in place before I put this on and then I'll put on the uh, uh, back on the pan and uh, then start putting in fluid all right well got the pan back on and uh, got all the bolts around it kind of just tightened in a star pattern and got them a little more than snug they don't have to be super tight and I got my funnel here into the transmission dipstick and then um, I kind of like to just uh, put in a bottle at a time and then fill this bottle up and then that way I know about how much I took out and so I don't overfill it and uh, granted that's not going to be perfect um, so look in your user manual I'm not exactly sure I think it's like when you drop the pan you'll get about six and a half to seven quarts out maybe more maybe less I'm not sure I'll have to check here in a second but um, yeah I like to just go and uh, go bottle by bottle and then fill up these bottles with the old fluid and um, stop when I run out of the old fluid all right put in about seven quarts and this is how you uh, check the transmission fluid and uh, yeah if you need to take out a bit well uh, kind of out of luck so there's no real way to do that so definitely don't overfill it um, and uh, just follow this to know how to do it